Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Rick, the host in this new episode of MSI Procast. Today, I'm really excited to present our guide on how to overclock your Intel i9-9900K processor. As a feature of this 8-core, 16-thread beast is the ability to easily overclock it to 5 GHz. MSI's new Z390 motherboards can easily achieve 5 GHz speeds and more, with just a little tweaking to squeeze out more performance. Lots of gamers who stream, YouTubers, and especially video editors like myself are eyeing the potential power of the new Intel i9 processor for their gaming and productivity. And it's actually not hard to hit 5 GHz with the right hardware and components. So you too can get a great boost to your CPU's power. First, we need to remind you, while most current motherboards and CPUs have protection for power and thermal throttling and will shut down before they are damaged, we are pushing the CPU past its normal operating area, so you do so at your own risk. Overclocking your CPU, if done near the maximum extremes, especially looking at voltage for the CPU cores, has the possibility of frying your CPU and possibly even your motherboard. Even a 0.5 volt increase can be a lot, to give you an idea. However, we're not going for the world record here today just a small tweak to boost performance, so we can do this safely. And we'd love to hear about your benchmarks, components you used, and your stories down below. For this build, we'll be using MSI's MEG Z390 ACE motherboard that supports Intel's 8th and 9th gen core processors with a 13-phase VRM power delivery and feature-rich BIOS. This board has steel armor reinforcing all three PCIe slots for a stronger hold, preventing damage due to heavy graphics cards. And the ACE supports SLI and Crossfire. A good feature on this board is the steel armor for the four DDR4 RAM slots. And with DDR4 Boost 2, it can overclock up to 4500 MHz with selected modules. Helping keep the overclock stable is a solid VRM heatsink design with titanium chokes for power efficiency and a better thermal solution, and solid caps for lower ESR and long lifespan. There's a debug LED two-digit display with four debug lights and BIOS flashback plus feature if you have trouble. Covering the VRMs is the pre-installed I.O. shielding with our Mystic Light Infinity design with LED strips and a mirror reflection effect. MSI's Mystic Light is capable of 16.8 million colors and 29 LED effects, matching with the onboard headers to control your entire PC's lighting setup and compatible peripherals. And the MEG Z390 ACE comes loaded with three Turbo M.2 Gen 3 slots with Intel Optane support and easy RAID setup with M.2 Genie, six SATA 3 connectors, and USB 3.1 Gen 2, and the killer E2500 Gigabit LAN. The Wi-Fi version of this board comes with the next-gen 2x2 Intel AC Wi-Fi with Bluetooth 5.0. We'll be using a Corsair RM850X for this, as we need a power supply with two ATX A-pin connectors, and that can supply at least 30 amps on the 12-volt rail. Be sure to check specs before you buy one. And we're using an i9-9900K CPU. Z390 boards will support 9th gen CPUs out of the box, and some Z370 boards can also, if you do a BIOS update first. The best 9900Ks can hit 5 GHz around 1.25 volts. Great CPUs are closer to 1.30, and average CPUs use 1.32 volts or higher. Controlling voltage is especially important with the 8-core i9 CPU because more voltage creates extra heat from each core. Speaking of heat, the 9900K generates a lot of heat under full load, and even more with AVX loads like Prime95. You can get by at 5 GHz with a 240mm RAD, but we're using a Corsair Hydro Series H115i 280mm liquid CPU cooler. For RAM, we'll be using 32GB of Corsair Vengeance DDR4 running at 2666MHz. This RAM has XMP and also works with our Dragon Alliance mode. This mode can achieve even higher frequencies than the top XMP setting. Our main drive will be a Samsung 960 EVO 1TB M.2 drive, which will give us super fast boot times for Windows and amazingly fast game loads, also being useful for Premiere Pro scratch disks. And we're putting all this in MSI's newest case, the Gungnir 100D, with a tempered glass panel, three 120mm front fans, and an ARGB fan with 8-port RGB fan hub included, you can adjust the LED lighting with a button on the top of the case. It also gives you an easy way to clean up the cables in the back. The spacious interior with great airflow will improve your cooling, 
while running your system. So let's start, and at the end, we'll show you an easy step-by-step -step list. Okay, hitting the power key, we'll tap the delete key and get into the BIOS. From the main screen, we'll press F7 to get into advanced mode to get to the full overclocking settings. Go to overclocking settings, and we can change the OC Explore mode to Expert, which allows us to see all the settings and values. So our first step will be to change the CPU ratio, and we'll type in a value of 50 here. And ring ratio should be at 47, which you may need to adjust. We suggest a ring value 3 less than the CPU ratio. Ring ratio controls the non-core CPU parts, such as the memory controller and cache, and a higher value will produce better benchmarks. The CPU ratio mode allows to select fixed, which you may want to try for benchmarking, but for daily use, the dynamic mode will keep your CPU cooler and save your power bills in the long run. For overclocking these latest 9th generation Intel chips to 5 GHz, our recommendation for the i9-9900K is 1.32 volts. For the i7-9700K, we suggest 1.37 volts. And for the i5-9600K, 1.43 volts. If you're lucky and get a good CPU, you can lower core voltage and still have a stable 5 GHz, which means less heat. If you're increasing voltage, add small increments like 0.02 or 0.03 for the adjustment, lowering or increasing core voltage to find the best settings for your chip. The good news is, is that the core voltage auto mode works pretty well with MSI's BIOS determining the recommended voltage based on your CPU's capability. Auto core voltage is set lower for very good CPUs and higher for average ones. In the CPU core voltage mode, there's five modes to pick from, with auto choosing override mode when doing overclocking. Adaptive changes the voltage depending on CPU load. Offset mode adds the offset voltage onto the default voltage. In the end, we'll pick override mode. When the CPU load increases, the core voltage decreases or drops, causing V-droop. In digit all power settings, the CPU load line calibration control corrects this drop, and we're leaving this on auto. If you're doing stress testing with a heavy AVX Prime 95 load, you may need to increase the CPU throttling temperature, and you can do so going into CPU features, to the CPU over temperature protection, and adjust it here you can set it to 115 degrees for stress testing. And finally, we're going to set the Intel C state value to disable for better overclocking stability. Save your settings, restart, and we should be ready to test. Just a reminder that your DDR4 RAM may have XMP profiles, so you can experiment turning it on after a successful overclock. Okay, so it's actually pretty easy once you have the right components all assembled. In summary, you'll need to Go into the BIOS and set the CPU ratio to 50. Next, use auto for CPU voltage, or you can manually set the value. You can set the CPU core voltage mode to override, though auto should be the same. Go ahead and disable that Intel C state for better stability. Run a quick benchmark in Cinebench or your bench of choice. Back in the BIOS, you can try enabling your memory's XMP, save, and benchmark again. So next on the list is stability testing and we can use CPU-Z to check the CPU frequency. To check CPU temperatures and power, we can use Core Temp or Hardware Info 64. For a live graph readout of your Intel CPU, Intel has their own excellent extreme tuning utility, which has a stress test, as well as indicators for thermal and voltage throttling. Our first test will be running Cinebench R15 for a primary stability test. In our testing, the 9900K went from 2009 points at stock to 2,167 points at 5 gigahertz. That's an increase of over 158 points or an 8% gain, and that's pretty darn impressive. For a torture stability test, Prime 95 version 27.9 or higher will test AVX instructions, and half an hour is a good quick test. Whereas, if it can survive two hours, then your system is completely stable. If you don't want to push it to the max, then a test with version 26.6 non-AVX will be fine too. Running Prime 95 version 27, the VRMs get very hot, so have a fan directly pointed at your VRMs to help cool them if you're running this test for long periods of time. No normal loads will cause this kind of temperature though, so even heavy rendering shouldn't require a fan. With the overclock stable, you can start enjoying your new power, or you can decide to either push for higher CPU clock frequencies or lower the voltage to decrease CPU temps. If it's not stable, try increasing core voltage little by little, 
or lowering the CPU frequency. If you're hitting above 90 degrees in Intel's XTU stress test, then you should lower the core voltage. Last thing, don't forget to visit the hardware monitor section of the BIOS, where you can adjust your fans or change the default smart fan profile by dragging the circles. This way, you can set a quieter profile for streaming or 4K gaming, and a more aggressive fan profile to kick on and take out the heat when you start your rendering. So with some component pre-planning and assembly, you can hit the 5 GHz Mark II, which is a little tweaking in the BIOS, and squeeze a good amount of extra power out of the nice shiny CPU you just got. Now we want to know what kind of results did you get with your setup? Did you encounter problems or great results you want to share? Please let us know how it went for you in the comments, and let us know of any ideas you have for upcoming episodes. If this guide helped you or you learned something, don't be shy to hit that thumbs up button, or please tell us what we missed to improve for next time. Thanks for joining us today, and we wish you happy overclocking. See you all in the next episode.